Problems with transportation is one of the biggest blockers preventing children from getting much needed medical care. Today on Expert Connections, we're talking with a nonprofit founder, the first in the nation to address this problem directly. Expert Connections starts now. Welcome to Expert Connections. I'm Julie Holton. Joining me today is Pam McLeodchich. She is the founder and CEO of the Davies Project. It's so good to see you, Pam. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Julie. It's nice to be here. Pam, I want to first focus on the problems that arise from missed healthcare appointments because mm -hmm. that is what first captured your attention and the reason behind why the Davies Project even exists. So before you launched the Davies Project, what had you noticed? What were the stats showing you about the correlation between children and missed appointments? Well, you know, this all began when my son had cancer at the age of three. Uh, he's 26 now and healthy, but he had a very, very long struggle um, with his health. And we had everything going for us. We had two cars, we had a house. My husband and I had solid employment and understanding employers. We had insurance, we spoke the language, you name it, we had everything going for us. But what we noticed during my son's care was how many families were struggling just to get to their appointments. And the clinics would tell us that again and again, that, oh, wow, how much easier we seem to have it than other families, which it certainly didn't seem easy to us, not at all. But what we were facing was very different from what so many other families were facing. And in our community, 70% of the children who rely on the specialty clinics are on Medicaid, 70%. And they're missing 60% of their outpatient appointments. So that's what we would notice was that we would be on a certain schedule. We knew other children were on the same schedule and suddenly we'd be at an appointment and we'd realize they weren't there. And the more we dug and the more we looked, the, we realized transportation was a huge barrier to access for care for children. Those numbers are just shocking, I imagine, for many people listening to hear that 60% of appointments are missed mm -hmm. and it's because of transportation. So how does the Davies Project help to to you know, answer the need for transportation? So what we do is we gather volunteer drivers from all over the community and we need many more. <laughs> Please be aware of that as you're listening to this podcast. But volunteer drivers step in for a three hour commitment. And what they do is they pick the child up at home with the parent, there's always a parent or guardian with them. They take them to the appointment, they wait with them there and then they drive them home again. It sounds very simple, but it is serving a huge need in our community. We work with every type of seriously ill child that struggles with transportation. If they see a specialist for any reason, that's when the Davies Project steps in. And we will then take them to every kind of appointment. That means occupational therapy, physical therapy, all of their specialty appointments, um, mental health care, dental eye, because all of that contributes to the well-being of that child. And not only that, it takes away a lot of the pressure that's on the parent, uh, which I just know how, what a stressful situation it was for us a very long time ago. I cannot imagine with some of the resources the families are dealing with. Can you tell us more about your personal story? You know, you, you mentioned it briefly, you know, when your own son was sick, and it just is so inspiring to me that you've taken this, this personal experience, this journey your family had, and you've turned it into an entire organization now to help other families that, um, as you say, are going through even more than you went through because you had you know, reliable transportation and you had employers that gave you time off. But I imagine at the time, you know, those are those are big blessings that. Um, given your situation, you know, at the time, I just can't imagine what you and your family would have been going through. And now you help families dealing with that every day. What's the personal story behind the Davies Project? Yes. Um, 
my oldest son, Peter, was not quite three and a half when he was diagnosed with leukemia. We were out in Massachusetts, which is um, where I'm from originally. We were there for the Christmas holiday, Christmas of 99. And Peter had a younger brother, still does, but he had a brother a year and a half younger. And I was six weeks away from delivering our third child, a daughter. And when we were out there for Christmas, Peter spiked a fever of 105. And no matter what we did, we could not reduce that fever for anything. It, it was very, very scary. Then we'd put him to bed and he was just screaming with pain during the night. We didn't know what was going on. I called the doctor here and I remember saying, this is Dr. Susan Burke. I remember calling her and saying, I am so scared and I don't know why. And she said to get back to Michigan as quickly as we could, which we did. Um, when we arrived home, she suspected something was wrong, sent him for blood work. And uh, we thought maybe it was pneumonia too. We didn't, we didn't know what was happening. And it turned out to be leukemia. And that was diagnosed the very next morning with chemotherapy starting the morning after that. They waste no time with children when that sort of situation occurs. Um, his blood was at what they said, what they described was 95% leukemic blasts. I think actually that's probably one of the blood components was 95% of that, but it, he was in, he was in pretty rough shape. It was weeks and weeks and months and then years of chemotherapy, treating him to get him better. We had some very, very frightening times during there but we also kept his hospitalizations to a minimum. The best thing though, was being able to take care of him at Sparrow Hospital 10 minutes from home. We could go home at the end of the day, shut our doors and almost pretend none of this was happening. The hospital was near. If he then had a crisis during the night, we could take him straight in and straight up to the pediatric floor. Sparrow did a wonderful job with him. His doctors were phenomenal and um, he is now, I'm, I'm proud to say, um, he is now 26 years old and he received his PhD in mechanical engineering on Friday. So we had quite a celebration and who knew way back when what, what his life trajectory would look like. I just remember wanting to see him as an eight-year-old and now I've seen him as a 26-year-old doing really good things. And just incredible to hear, you know, how this story just has transformed your life and the lives of others in our community. So great to hear how well he's doing today. And I can't even imagine just the scary moments of not knowing what the next day would bring or the next month. And here you are celebrating his PhD graduation. That's just incredible for you and your family. And I know that's a gift that you are working so hard to give to other families in the form of providing transportation. Mm -hmm. The inspiration behind the name of the Davies Project comes from Dr. Davies. Can you tell us about him and what was so in, what has been so inspiring about oh. him and his work? Dr. Deli Davies was the Chair of Pediatrics and Human Development in the College of Human Medicine here at Michigan State University. He had a reputation in town as just such a kind, compassionate, very, very capable infectious disease doctor for, for children. And um, he was recruited here to um, create a really wonderful pediatric facility where all of the pediatricians from around town would work in one facility and there'd be support services in that same facility. That dream never came to full fruition, and we won't go into the reasons behind that. Um, but ultimately, uh, he, he then ended up at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, and where he's doing wonderful things. He's a senior vice chancellor out there. But I met him when Peter was eight years old, and he was in, and Peter was invited to be a kid of inspiration for what was then called the MSU Children's Health Initiative. And this was all part of really beefing up our clinics and, and, and the um, ability to coordinate care better of, for children in this community. But this was a partnership with the um, MSU women's basketball team, including, um, well, Susie Merchant then came into that. And she's been a wonderful, wonderful spokesperson on our behalf and a big supporter. She's even driven families for us, which has been a wonderful 
co-volunteer job with her son Brady. We've been very excited to have her as as part of our as part of our network. Um, but anyway, that night that Peter was invited to this basketball game, he and his brother got to sit with the basketball team, and and it was all very exciting. And that's the night I met Dr. Davies, and that's the night I had just finished my PhD in uh, agricultural economics. And I was looking to next steps, but thinking they would still be involved with Africa, where I had worked as a Peace Corps volunteer and later and, and doing other things. But Dr. Davies that night really made me rethink where I was headed. So within two weeks, I was serving on the board of directors for the Davies Project as a parent advocate. And next thing, I had a fourth child. And after that, I was co-directing the MSU Children's Health Initiative, working very closely with Dr. Davies, and just seeing his skill set and his knowledge and everything he felt about this community and what we could do here. It was just such an inspiration so that when the Children's Health Initiative stopped and he moved on, I thought, I still want to recognize him in a very positive way. And that's why I named the agency the Davies Project. Well, and it's important to note, Pam, that you are inspiring to so many in our community. You mentioned Susie Merchant, how incredible that she even um, has spent time as a volunteer driver. I also know that MSU basketball coach Tom Izzo, um, the Davies Project was recently chosen as one of the Izzo Legacy Family Funds supported charities. Congratulations on that. It shows what an impact you are making in this community. I know that the recognition helps to drive more mm -hmm. sponsorships, more donations, which then in turn literally helps you to drive more families, more children um, to their appointments. Right. You have an important fundraiser coming up, uh, a, a race named in honor of a child uh, named Max. Tell us about Max's race. Yes, Max's race has been going on for about 18 years now. I believe this is the 18th year. Um, Max's parents, Natalie and Jim, uh, now Natalie Poole and Jim Matthews, they lost their son, Max, when he was six years old. He, was, um, he had contracted meningitis when he was younger and he ultimately passed away from complications related to meningitis they began Max's race as a way to honor and remember their son. And it became a very big race on the MSU campus and starts at the rock and ends at the rock. It's a beautiful race to participate in. You can run, walk, push a stroller, walk your dog, whatever you'd like. It's, um, it, it's just, a, it's, it's on June 24th, the adult race, the, or not the adult race, but the 5K race starts at eight in the morning. There's a kid's race, a one mile race that begins at nine in the morning. And there's also a kid's sprint at roughly nine o'clock too. Beautiful time of day to enjoy Michigan State and to gather with really neat people. Several years ago, Natalie and Jim reached out to the Davies Project that they would like some of the proceeds from that race to come, come to us. We were just getting started and they were very early supporters of our work and it meant the world to me. About four years ago, they approached me and said, we've done this race a long time. It's a lot of work. We love this race, but would you like to take it on? So with that, we took it on, but I said that Max would always stay at the center of this race. So it is now called Max's Race for the Davies Project and all funds raised go towards making sure we can help the hundreds of families in our community that need help getting to their medical appointments. One thing I should clarify, we also supply rides to expecting women who have been missing so many of their prenatal appointments. That's been a very big part of our mission. Also, we drive parents back and forth to the neonatal ICU at Sparrow Hospital. And that's a really important thing too. Uh, because we know bonding is so important right after an infant is born. And if the parents don't have transportation to get back and forth to the hospital, especially when that child is hospitalized for a couple of months, it's very difficult when the child goes home. So all the funds raised through Max's race will go 
towards ensuring that these different populations are receiving the rides they need. And that means volunteer recruitment. We need to work hard to volunteer, uh, to recruit volunteers. We need um, all the coordination of scheduling the rides makes a big difference. We are growing very rapidly. Um, and, and Max's race is helping us to do that. So um, the Natalie and Jim will be at the race as will their families. And now they get to sit back and just enjoy the race and remember Max and know that all these people are coming out to participate and to do so much good in memory of their son. And what a beautiful location to honor Max and his oh, memory is. on MSU's campus. Also a great opportunity for businesses to get involved. I know oftentimes, you know, on the show, we we talk with businesses that are giving back in, in many ways, but a lot of our viewers are looking for ways to connect into their communities. Max's race and the Davies Project in general is a great opportunity for that. Now, I want to talk, you've mentioned your volunteer drivers several times, and I know that they really are what drive this organization to do so much good in so many lives. Right. So let's talk about the drivers. They provide transportation, of course, and so much more. Tell us about your volunteers and, and what it takes to really have a good core of people. Oh, it, I can't tell you. It is an absolute privilege knowing our drivers. We have about 45 active drivers right now. We would like to bring on probably 30 more at this point. Right now, the ride requests are increasing very quickly and the driving, the driver availability is not quite matching that demand. So such that we have a little bit of a shortage right now and we've begun a waiting list for families. But our drivers, many of them, uh, they're welcome from all different kinds of backgrounds, ages, you name it. But the core right now tend to be older volunteers, retirees, even coming from teaching social work and medical backgrounds. So they're coming in with the skills needed to really work with the families. Now, they're really just a listening ear in the car. They're not to advise medically. They're not to, you know, they're not to engage beyond, really beyond listening, but just providing support. And I can tell you, even when my family was going through what we were going through, it would have been so nice sometimes to just have somebody there that wasn't a family member that could relate to what you were doing, but weren't as emotionally invested. Um, it, it's a very, very big responsibility, but it's a very meaningful one to the drivers as well as the families. Our tagline is more than just a ride. And that is very much because of the work that our drivers do. Each time they go out, they take a gallon sized bag filled with healthy snacks for the child to keep. And to, you know, kids are always help, are always hungry, especially after going to the doctors. So we've learned that that is a much better uh, solution than, than drivers taking kids to McDonald's, which was happening for a while. Nothing wrong with McDonald's, but uh, we want these kids eating as healthy as they possibly can. We also gather gently used books in our facility. So every time a driver goes out, they come in and they grab a couple of books for the family to keep. And families are loving that. Uh, we have parents who are reading to their children at bedtime and it's just, it's very, it's a nice solution. So when you combine those two small acts with a compassionate driver taking you back and forth to appointments, that builds up trust in a way that isn't always there. Traditionally, lots of families of color have a distrust of our medical system. We're helping break through that as well. And we're, you know, sometimes we will help drivers to, uh, families to understand how maybe to better ask questions of their doctors, how, how to just think about things. We have a director of engagement on staff now too, that drivers can turn to, families can turn to, that when maybe a family needs an additional resource, Maria, our director of engagement, helps connect families to those resources in town. Many of these families have case managers, but the case managers are really overworked through the health department or wherever they're stemming from. We have somebody who can go a little bit further, a little extra distance on behalf of the families we serve. When families are going through some of the worst times of their lives, that extra care and compassion goes so far to show that they're not alone. 
Pam, uh, and we'll link to we'll link to um, the DaviesProject.org so that people who are interested in becoming a volunteer or learning more about the organization, how to get involved, how to donate, we'll link to that in the comments below. Pam, one last question for you. Yes. If our viewers leave this interview with just one new lasting impression of the Davies Project, of the work that you do, the work that needs to be done, what do you want to make sure people know? If you think you can't make a difference, you're wrong. Our drivers are able to pick and choose the rides they take. They can do one a week, they can do one a month, they can do four rides a week. It doesn't matter, we will fit your schedule, but even one ride a month makes a very big difference. And that's what I want your viewers to remember. You know, it, it, it can be discouraging watching the news. It can be discouraging hearing so many sad stories. Well, don't get discouraged. Come out and work with us and get to know our other drivers. I'll tell you, we have a great network of people. If you're looking to meet some really wonderful new people, you've got that here in the families we serve and in the other drivers and our staff too. We're a very welcoming organization and we would love to have more people joining us. And it, may, it feels good to make a difference in the lives of another family. And um, I want you to know that you're welcome here and would love to have you. Pam, thank you so much for your time today. I'm inspired by the work you do at the Davies Project and how you're helping so many families in our community. Thanks for all you do. And for those who have joined in today to watch, check out the DaviesProject.org for more information on Pam and all of the work that's being done in the greater Lansing region. Pam, thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Julie.